today, uh, project management review, but really not a lot. I'm just gonna pass quickly. Definitions, steps, RM steps, which will, I will remind you the video again. Risk assessment, and I'm gonna give you two tools: risk impact impact metrics, and we'll do hands-on activities. Okay. Okay. Remember this one. So this we talked about the project management, but if you look at really from a risk management. This picture is full of risks. What are some possible risks in this project? This is about project management, right? We we talked about it. But now put on your risk goggles and look at from a risk perspective. What do you see here? Project team leader, customer, everybody misunderstands it. So that's a huge risk. That customer will not contract with you one more time. They will just stay away from you. Okay because you did not make enough effort to understand them because customer doesn't know the technology. They don't have to know it. They don't have to know the international standards. They don't have to know the electrical engineering standards. Uh, they don't have to know the laws, right? Uh, city permits, uh, all these things, they don't have to know, right? They, you have to understand the customer really good. Requirements creep, there's also requirement creep risk, right? All these things are risk. And we never, never talked about them. We talked a little bit about it in the part. Just upfront, when you become a leader, I always ask your team, okay, what are the risks? Just ask them, did you consider the risk? That'll make a huge leap in your plans. Whoever is presenting you anything, okay, just ask them as a leader or as a team member, it doesn't matter. Uh, did we consider the risk? What are some possible risks, right? When you ask this question to your team, so next time when we come to meeting, we want to make sure that we say something about the risk, we'll, which will be a, a huge leap in the planning and execution as well. Ask them, what about the risks? What are we doing about the risks, right? And always remember, did you consider the risk? Did you consider the risk? You will see the great change in your team and their planning. Okay, because leaders should ask good questions. Because if you don't ask good questions, it shows that you don't know enough. People who don't ask questions, believe me, they don't know it. If they knew it, they would ask questions. Okay, so always ask good questions. And, and one of them, I want it to be a risk. Okay, <clears throat> a project, you know it already. We can go from there. But when we think about the triple constraints, time, scope, and cost, of course, there are risks involved in all of them, right? We talk about the PERT and the critical path and what should project manager do, which which activities should she consider, you know, the risk and how where she should be. So all these things. But there's also an extended version of uh, the constraint in a project. And one of them is risk. That's why I chose risk here, okay? Risk. This is like an individual, a, a separate, a standalone, okay, risk. Uh, but I want to ask you, have you ever taken any risks? Because we talked about uncertainty, right? But sometimes there are certain things and we embrace them. Have you ever taken any risks? Anyone? Have you ever avoided any risks? The thing that I want everyone to remember about risk, risk is not always negative, right? Of course, there may be opportunity costs Those for those who know what it is. There will be opportunity costs for you. For risk appetite is what we say. So you risk your money, like you some said, investment, and then you hope to get some rewards, right? You hope to get some rewards, of course. Risk definition. So let's study this because this is very important. If you understand this, you will understand everything about risk. So risk is an uncertain event, right? Somebody already told me uncertainty, right? Uncertain. There is uncertainty, but again, there, there is certain things that we embraced, right? And then uh, if occurs, what does that mean? Occurs. So sometimes it doesn't occur. We just think about the risk. We take it in our plans. 
but it doesn't occur, which is totally fine, right? Know this, it may have positive or negative. So that's what I was gonna I was saying. Risk is not always negative. Sometimes risk is positive as well. And you know what? We don't care about risks if they are not impacting our project objective. That's why I said the risk is related to the project management because anything you consider risk should be one of your project objectives. If it's not, that's not a risk for you. So whatever is your project objective, you, you have to consider that objective to find out the risks. So even though there's congestion, it's not a risk for me right now. But if I need to go there and there's a congestion, then there's a risk. That's a risk that I need to consider. Anything other than your project objective is not a risk for you. Well, there may be secondary risk, but yeah. Because if the next, if the, if there's a fire next next room or next house, may may impact me as well. So some of the things that we already alluded in our discussion. So risk is not always bad. Identify early in the process. That's why the first one is risk identification. Identify early in the process. Always think about possibility and impact, okay? What can go wrong? What should go right? If you are a team member, okay? If you are a team leader, always ask your team, what can go wrong? What should go right? So always ask your team these questions. And the steps is identification, like this baby, first gauge how how high is the bed and he decided he can't do it that's identification and assessment okay risk response development which we will talk more next time memorize this like this i a d c it's always easier to remember that's actually the, so i a d c is a good one okay remember it that way in your interviews you can always say oh risk management has four steps i a d c and then and then continue explaining them so this one, uh, risk identification, you come up with your risks. So when you start identifications, you come up with your risks. Actually, a tire hitting me, someone hitting me or a student on a, on a vehicle, right? Hitting me, a, a car hitting me is more probable, right? So what are your risks? In risk identification, you come up with those things. And then risk assessment. Of course, a tire can hit me possibly but nothing will happen, right? And it's a slim chance. So after your risk assessment, what you do is risk severity and likelihood. And can you control the risk? So you come up with these things and then you have now a risk assessment plan. And then you develop your risk response strategies. Now you wanna develop a strategy, that's a strategy, and develop contingency plans. What can we do? What else we can do to mitigate this risk? Okay, and then when once you have a risk management plan, now you implement that and then you monitor that. Why you have to manage, monitor? Because some risk today may not be your risk tomorrow or some things that are not risk today may be a risk for your project objective tomorrow. So you always need to think about it. So implementation, monitoring and controlling is very important. So we already know uncertain and we need to think about the effects. So effects can be negative and positive. Okay, remember that? So when it's positive, we call it them opportunity, like but still opportunity. And the other one is threat. Okay, threat. So then it's negative. So risk is a function of likelihood and impact. We have been talking about this today, right? So likelihood, impact, probability, consequences, some textbook and some domains we'll talk about as, as results, okay? So let's think about a scenario, okay? So there's a house, single family house, and owner does hate mice, okay? And there are a few mice in the house. So she puts up some uh, mouse traps around the house, Okay, and in the house, there's really hungry mouse. Whenever he's, it, the mouse is hungry, 
goes out and looks around, and then uh, now the mouse seizes the cheese, right? Mouse cheese on a mouse trap or cheese looking thing on a mouse trap. Okay. So it, the mouse is really hungry. Okay. And the mouse needs to eat something, which may be this cheese looking thing. Okay. What can be some of the threats that in this risky situation, the mouse needs to consider? Okay. I will give you two minutes, everyone, to think about it. What are the threats? So if the mouse tries to eat that one, reach that thing, what might be some of the possibilities and outcomes? Okay. Hurt, injured, or killed, uh, die and hurt. He might get trapped. He might get some chunk of food, and he might get both food and escape. Okay. And assessment and risk response development and control, right? IADC. So probably maybe the house owner lady, maybe he, he purchased like with with odor, like smell, you know, cheese smelling, maybe a kind of a rock thing like this. When you are dealing with risk and trying to identify the risk, we got to try to escape from all assumptions, right? So this might not be a food in the first place. So... How do you test this? If Because you don't want to break, I mean, the mouse doesn't want to break his teeth, right? How can you test the waters like the baby did? Yeah, maybe then the, that is, it's going to snap on, on you probably. But you, you can find the stick and poke with a stick. Cheese, probably the stick will get in. If it's like a rock, probably the stick will not get. Because if we come to the table with all of our assumptions, we will be heading the wrong route. We have to consider everything uh, and start from scratch, like for identification, right? Uh, it's not only mouse. Your Our project objective is eating that, I understand. But going to there, maybe the lady is waiting for us, right? Probably she contaminated, right? Some, not only cheese, but some mouse uh, contamination around the mouse trap. So you can't even reach to the cheese if it's a cheese, okay? So we have to consider all these risks, possibility of it being poisoned. Yeah, you can break your jaw, break your teeth, right? And even maybe contaminated and poisoned by by cheese looking thing. Or maybe it's a cheese, but maybe some poison injected in the cheese, right? I mean, all kinds of risks is there. And just like in life, right? Every day you get into your car. Every day you basically raise for the day and you don't know what's going to happen during the day in terms of risk, right? Don't be paranoid, but some risk we should be paranoid, right? We have to think about the homeowner waiting for us with an umbrella. We have to be thinking about the contamination, the poison, that not being cheese. All these things are risk identification, right? And assessment also like bring a friend or look for the lady in the kitchen, right? use a stick, all these things are valid assessment. Risk response strategies, how can we do this? And then controlling, of course. So the moral of the story is always think about uh, get rid of your assumptions and try to you know, search for all the risks around the platform, not only the cheese, okay? Not only the cheese. So that's a, that's a skill, that's a big skill, okay? So that, that was a little exercise for us to think about risk and risk assessment. Uh, so you got, for example, after the risk identification, you you come up with five risks, right? Cheese not being the cheese, maybe a rock, uh, maybe a stone, maybe a, a poison injected cheese, lady waiting for. So we have all these risks, let's say five risks, right? So what do we do? Well, we try to assess them. Which one is more likely? Which one is more impactful? Right? We got to consider those things. So that plays in the second step, risk assessment. Okay? We want to quantify the risk so that we can prioritize them. And then we can take, we can consider strategies. We can uh, develop strategies. Okay? Because we will do something 
within our budget, within our timeline, within our resources. Okay, so we got to prioritize them. Even though you have five risks for that mouse, probably it can only attack three of them or two of them, not all of them probably, right? So that assessment helps us. So, and then how do we aggregate the risks? We do uh, probability times consequences and add them up. You know, this means basically P, P1, C1, you know, plus this is times P2, C2, plus P3, C3, right? And then you add them up and then you have the aggregate risk, overall risk, right? Overall risk. That's first equation in the risk management that we need to know. Probability times impact. Remember from the start of this lesson, we always talk about probability and consequences. Then how do we assess and prioritize? Well, we look at the probability and consequences and then we multiply them and then we prioritize them. Okay, if, if that's not, if that composes more parts, then we simply calculate risk for each part and then add them up. Okay, add them up. That's how we do the risk. That's new for here. The risk assessment. So let's say you have a machine, right? Energy generation unit. Uh, that's how we should understand. So it's a big, big unit, right? It's a big, big unit. So energy generation unit generates too little power once in a year, and the cost is 5,000 per incident, okay? Well, as you can see, it's just once, but the, the cost is not really high. When energy generation unit generates too much power to be controlled, it's happening five in a thousand, which is very rare, but when it happens, now you need to spend $1 million, okay? ECU fails twice a year, each time it's $5,000, it's okay. Loss of power happens five in a thousand times a year, but you have to spend 1 million, right? Look at this. So you gotta spend $10 million, but it happens only once in a thousand in a year, right? How do you aggregate this whole machine, like whole unit? Your boss is asking, what is the risk of this machine with all the units, considering all the units, what's the overall risk? And how do you calculate this? You gotta give them a number, right? And that's uh, exactly what is happening here. P e times C, right? So one time 5,000 plus, uh, 0, 0, 005 times 1 million, right? Plus 2 times 5,000 plus 0, 0, 001 times 500,000 and then plus 0, 0, 005 times 1 million. And you aggregate them and then you found one number. What is the overall risk in terms of money for this? machine the system so now you have you have at least one tool right when you do this you have 45k so when your boss asks you okay what is the what is the risk of this machine failing and creating headache for me for this year and you say sir ma'am 45000 a year is our risk okay i am your boss and you presented these numbers to me what does that mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. This machine would cost us 45,000 a year. So what do you mean really? What do we mean? So if I give you 45,000 today, would it be enough for you? Or how much should I give it to you today? Or what do you want really? You're saying you're showing me 45,000, but it may cost more. How much do you want today? So I can, I can tell my finance department to transfer you the money you needed. And mm -hmm. uh, you're saying loss of ETU, which is energy transfer unit, costs you one million. How come you want just seventy-seven thousand? And what if this happens? Would you come back to me and ask for money? That's the uh, that's the difficult part. Okay, mm -hmm. I completely understand. I don't have that answer as well. Mm -hmm. So, which means uh, sometimes it's good to insure the machines. Just get an insurance company. 
who would be interested in these numbers? So as engineers, we think that whenever we calculate a number, our job is done. Our job is not done. We have to tell others what we need, what is good for the company. These numbers, they will not make sense for those guys, okay? How much should we ask? Because this is a real situation, right? We are in a meeting, CEO is there, and he's asking me, how much do you want today? I can transfer your, your project budget. It's very risky, right? It's very difficult. But who is interested in these things? Not only company, outside the company. How about your sponsors? How about your investors? Maybe someone wants to buy this machine or uh, uh, acquire your, your company, right? Maybe you're a startup or something. They want to acquire you and make you bigger. They will be interested in those kind of numbers because you don't. You probably don't have only one machine. If there's five machines like this and it takes hundreds of thousands of dollars just to maintain them, maybe they will invest to another company, right? Investors, stockholders, yeah. Insurance companies, that's a good one. They would want to know this number. Why? Because they're going to underwrite it, right? They're going to create a code for you, and this code should include this. Yeah, to design their policy. They want to know this number. They don't want to charge you less for a huge risk. They want to charge you enough because when this happens, now they're just you're just going to call them and get them fix it or you will fix it and get the money or something right how however it works they're going to underwrite this policy so they will they will design the policy such that's why home insurance companies uh, but they ask like do you have a garage for cars is there a fire uh, you know fire uh, alarms if is there do you have a backyard uh, is is this in a flooding zone they ask all kinds of stuff right to design their policy. They want to know all these things. So uh, why would you accept risk? Sometimes we accept risk because it's not safe to risk. It's not security. It's very low probability, like a tire hitting us in my neighborhood. It's very, very low. That's why I don't care about it, right? Uh, maybe we have a risk appetite to, you know, historically accepting the risk anyways. But uh, how can we formulate and structure these strategies that about the mouse, right? These are my strategies. Use a stick. Attempt to capture the cheese in collaboration with another fellow mouse. That's also what, something that I thought. Just attempt the cheese without thinking of getting poisoned or anything. Use another mouse for testing the trap. Do not eat it. Just change the plan, right? But how can we formulate these things? What, what we call the third step, risk response strategies, okay? And those are these, and we will cover them in a scenario next time.